What's up, you guys? It's Matt here. So as you know, Terra Luna Classic is one of my favorite positions. You know, I made so much money percentage-wise with this position that I can't hate it, right? Um, I see the potential in what we can do. I see the potential in what the community can do, but it all depends on what we end up voting on, what the validators end up voting on, what we decide to support, which path we end up going down. And all of that leads to whether Terra Luna Classic has success or it doesn't have success. Now, there are huge votes that are going to go on that are, I believe, going to change, um, <clears throat> you know, Terra Luna Classic as we know, especially the people that are staking it, especially the people that are holding on to it for a longer period of time. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted to talk about these. So bear with me. Uh, my throat, my nose, ev everything is just not really feeling that great. I guess I must have a cold. I got my tea. That's right here. It kind of cooled down a little bit. But um, yeah, I got my tea that's right there. And hopefully, um, you know, I feel better by tomorrow. But I wanted to talk to you guys again about Terra Luna Classic. But before we get into that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. <clears throat> also, make sure you guys check out some of the links down below. It does help out the channel. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Patreon, follow me on Kick. Those links are down in the description as well. First link will be for Kick if you guys want notifications for my live streams. I would love to have people over there. They have a high revenue share when it comes to, you know, streamers. So if you want to be a part of that and I, you know, solely stream on there, that would be great. But it's going to take time to build it up to that point. So feel free to go and follow me on Kick. <coughs> Anyways, Terra Luna Classic, right? You know that I'm a big fan. Let's give you guys a little bit of an update because I don't believe we're going to have another video. Um, it is up 1%. We're seeing it. Um, at a $500 million market cap, um, we are seeing it at, you know, 82% increase in volume, $55 million that's going through it, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, 88 of that is going through DEX volume. <clears throat> now, I'll bring that full circle and we'll, we'll see exactly what I want to apply to the volume there. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update. Now, we did see a high point of it uh, reaching to a point where it was going to look like it was going to break um, that one zero or drop that one zero um, to kind of get back to a little bit of form of normalcy, I guess. Um, but it didn't. Um, it ended up decreasing here. <clears throat> it is a part of the whole situation with, um, you know, XRP being labeled a or being not labeled a security. Being labeled not a security as well as Terra Luna Classic could um, suffer the same fate of not being labeled um, as a security. Now, that's not really suffering. That's obviously improving upon, and we could see um, Terra Luna Classic thrive because of it, <clears throat> as well as, you know, a lot of other positions that were labeled a security. Um, I don't even know if you saw that label. There we go. Label a security. <clears throat> um, but anyways, that's where Terra Luna Classic stands. Saw a little bit of an increase, saw an increase in volume because money is flowing through the crypto market. Uh, a lot of it's flowing through the crypto market right now. But Let's get into what you guys came here for, which is the two things that we are voting on. So um, this came out about five hours ago, right? Terra Luna Classic community votes to revise Luna gas fees and staking on delegation period. Now, I've heard about this last part a lot, right? I know that there's always adjustments to gas fees. <clears throat> but I've heard a lot about undelegation period where people were like, hey, you need to wipe out the undelegation period. We need to make sure that people have freedom to what they're holding. And I understand where people are coming from, right? They wanna have freedom so that they can sell it and gain something out of it. But staking is all about supporting it long-term. So if you're supporting it long-term, you take whatever risks there are associated with it, whatever uh, stipulations there are associated with it. And usually that comes with an undelegation period. You know, you have um, DeFi wallet that has an undelegation period. You even have Coinbase that has an undelegation period now, which I didn't know about, honestly. Some of them are, are, are low. Like I think Ethereum is like seven days, but I think um, ADA is like two days. Um, but when you talk about an undelegation period here, sorry, my nose is itching. When you talk about an undelegation period here, you're looking at, um, you know, what was it? 21 days that they had. <clears throat> so let's go through this. Terra Luna Classic Community uh, current, um, currently votes on two key governance proposals. <clears throat> raise the gas fees by 2x to reduce the staking and reduce the staking undelegation period to 14 days. The proposal has received um, um, initial support 
from uh, Terra Luna Classic community members um, as efforts to revive Lunic to $1 and peg USTC gain momentum. So you go down here and you have what the proposal is, which one proposal is saying reduce the staking undelegation period from 14 days to reduce the uh, Lunic staking undelegation period to uh, from 21 days to 14 days. This will give more flexibility <clears throat> to users regarding their staking their staked Lunic and encourage more to stake, which reduces the lunar cur current supply or circulating supply. Um, now that's, that's true. I think reducing it to a certain amount is it makes sense. I think reducing it to, you know, 14 days, it still gives you that understanding that there is some sort of a, um, you know, downside to staking, you're not just, you know, staking it receiving what you receive, and then get out right away. Like you have an undelegation period to where you don't gain anything. And, you know, you, you have to hold on to that for a longer period of time. So it's not something where you're like, hey, I'm trying to day trade this while gaining something. Um, that's what you saw with Coinbase. And that's why you have, you know, the um, undelegation period there. So 14 days is not bad. <clears throat> I would have loved to see it 10 days, any period in time to where they have to wait longer, um, or they have to wait a certain amount of days uh, does kind of disincentivize a lot of day trading within those platforms um but seeing a, a lower amount of days in like 21 or 15 or something you may now see more people that stake <clears throat> that know they don't have to wait like almost a month in order to see everything undelegated um <clears throat> so this is definitely a big thing. The next one will be raising the gas fees by 2x. Now, um, this aims to raise all current gas fees uh, by 2x. It will boost the community pool funding and staking rewards as the gas fees are split 50-50 between the two. The last gas fee adjustment was six months ago. So this is something that does uh, happen uh, frequently, which is uh, gas fees that are adjusted. This is why I think that, you know, Shibirium should adjust their gas fees and, um, you know, focus on a little bit higher, something that uh, where they can have, um, you know, money to put different places and put in um, areas that will help out the community. But honestly, I don't know if they will with that ecosystem dev team, but that's a whole nother story. <coughs> um, but for this, it makes sense to do something like this, right? Raising the gas fees by a little bit, it doesn't really cost that much anyways. But the only issue that I have with this is the fact that we're not really seeing the volume on the DEX side anyways. So hopefully with people that are staking more, we can see a little bit more volume because again, I told you how it would go full circle. Um, if you look at the volume that we are seeing here and we go here, um, we're seeing $88,000 out of the 55 million. You would think it's like 5%, 10%, 20%. No, we're seeing 55.6 million that's going through, uh, CEXs and 88,000 that's going through, um, DEXs. So it's not as much volume and we're hoping to have more volume because of the tax. Um, we want to see more that's burned off. <clears throat> also, you want to see more that's going to the community pool, more that's going towards funding, right? And and helping out um, the ecosystem as a whole. Um, but it's just not, we're not seeing the volume there. So hopefully with the staking um, undelegation period decreasing, and you obviously have votes on it, um, you could increase the volume that's going in there because that's the only way that you stake on, t on station is <clears throat> by going through the DEX side, which would include... Um, you know, finding a way to send it over there, which should cost you, um, you know, a certain tax, a 0.5% tax that goes towards burning, which would be fantastic. Um, we've seen burning numbers decrease um, lately because there's not as much volume that's going through. But anyways, these are two huge votes that could actually have really big changes. I think they're very interesting um, for everybody to at least take notice on and give their opinions on. What do you think about these? In the comment section below, let me know. Guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. Also, make sure you check out some of the links down below. It does help out the channel. And if you guys wanna follow me on Twitter, at Perry8K, you can follow me there. I'm gonna get out of here and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.